Another day, another hearing. House Republicans held a hearing where they got to the bottom or tried to get to the bottom of the prosecution of Trump by District Attorney of Manhattan, Alvin Bragg. This, of course, led to the conviction that created the first situation where a foreign president is a convicted felon, the current presidential candidate. Now, I've told you before about the efforts by Republicans to do two major things with these hearings. And then I'll show you some clips of Democrats just, just brutalizing Trump and Republicans in this hearing. But the two goals are, number one, serve dear leader Trump. Number two, uh, <laughs> distract from their other lack of serious governance, right? Their other issues with accomplishing anything. And the fact that they don't have just policy achievements to run on makes it to where this type of stuff is their only shot at winning back over or exciting, I should say, the Republican base. And we've looked at a bunch of different examples of this. Today's example is doing a hearing about the prosecution of Trump. And Trump has been demanding House Republicans do something to weaponize their authority as much as they're accusing the other side of doing that, to intervene in the enforcement of the law. This is not law and order party stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the first moment where Eric Swalwell sort of mocks his colleagues and asks, who's been hanging out with a convicted felon today because Trump was up on Capitol Hill hanging out with them? And then we'll get to another brutal moment. Just a show of hands for anyone in the room who hung out with a felon today. Hey guys, probably wanna get your hands up. If you were hanging out with convicted felon Donald Trump, I don't think anyone on our side did. But that's why we're here. Exactly. It's to serve Trump. These are campaign efforts. These are Trump campaign stunts. That's what this is. And I don't want to be too much of a broken record. I almost said broken clock, but I caught myself. Broken record by saying, uh, I like to think I'm correct more than just twice a day. Uh, so definitely not a clock. But it's important we keep in mind as we talk about these hearings, that this is always to the detriment of something else. They could always instead be spending this time doing hearings on the issues facing the American people. But the only American citizen that much of this Republican caucus seems to care one bit about is Donald J. Trump the convicted felon. And that's unfortunate for sure. Here's Adam Schiff. I don't know if I'll be able to play this entire thing for you because it, uh, it's going to take a while. But he just decides, you know what, we're here. We're here to talk about the conviction of Trump and the corrupt prosecution, as Republicans would frame it, by Alvin Bragg. I'm going to go ahead and just quote the jury and let them speak on behalf of this issue. I want to begin uh, by quoting the jury in the Manhattan hush money payment trial. Guilty, 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 guilty. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how 70% of our audience is not subscribed to the channel. <laughs> Please. We're trying to make it different every day, so <laughs> today's was that. And please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much. Guilty. 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 Okay, let's just pause. I know hearing guilty that many times is is uh, sort of dizzying. So I'll pause here, we'll play a little bit more of it, then get to what he says afterwards. But I think what we really should have as a takeaway is it so impressive that Adam Schiff is counting in his head how many guilties he's done? That's what I'm thinking. I already lost track. But he's not looking at notes. He's keeping track of... That's intelligence. Wow. Guilty. 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 This was what the jury pronounced. Wow. And I'll play more, but I feel like at some point I would have gone guilty. 25. I mean, guilty. <laughs> Unanimously on every count. My Republican colleagues don't really contest Donald Trump's guilt. This is the fascinating thing. 
their argument is essentially he should never have been prosecuted or they falsely claim it was a political prosecution or they falsely claim it should have been a misdemeanor, not a felony. But they don't contest, not really, that Donald Trump was making hush money payments to a porn star to hide their affair from voters. What they're really saying is they're more than comfortable electing, nominating and electing as the President of the United States, someone making hush money payments to a porn star. The party formerly of the moral majority is now, I suppose, hoping to fashion some kind of immoral majority to reinstate Donald Trump as president. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is funny. These clips, you know, when they get posted by incredible people doing incredible work like ASIN get captioned. And so he did caption it with many guilties, but I won't go over that again for you. Should I? Do you need to hear that again? The quote was guilty, guilty. No, um, <laughs> but a good point there. And I love imagining Republicans during all these moments where Democrats are getting a chance to speak, just being forced to listen as Trump is so utterly embarrassed. And they are too, right? Because the point that Adam Schiff is making is one that we circle back to almost every day on this show, which is there is something profoundly irritating and shocking about seeing a whole movement, not one person you know who flip-flop on a principle, but a whole population of Americans, along with their leaders, deciding the principles they told us we need to respect that they held like, oh, we're super judgmental towards certain groups of people because we have this moral high ground because we're the party of family values. So we hold ourselves to a standard that then allows us to say your lifestyle is immoral and thus it should be restricted. And your lifestyle is immoral, should be restricted. And hatred expressed is justified in many cases because of the moral standing we have. And then... That just completely goes by the wayside. So you made a fool out of the both of us because I was trying to take you seriously and say, okay, if that's your principle, let me, let me see how I can engage with that in good faith. Oh, you were lying to me. And that breaks my heart. And I don't think I'll ever understand. And then the other thing, I was talking about this actually with a friend last night. It's one thing for... Uh, your religious folks to say we think the outcome of a Trump presidency would serve our interests such that his low character, dangerous intentions, and immoral behavior like what's the underlying story in the hush money case is acceptable for the purposes of the best outcome, right? And justify the means. That's one argument. And that can be more logically consistent, even if I disagree with it. But that's not what they make. The argument they choose to make is, no, Trump is, Trump is the most godly man. He can barely do anything in a day because he's spending so much time praying and reading the Bible. And <laughs> that act from people, pretending like that's what they see in Trump, I'm assuming some, because I believe in people, authentically see that. But how? And when I've talked to people on the ground at rallies, often the first thing that will come out of their mouth is, he's just such a, a godly, holy man. What are you talking about? Even if you think this prosecution was unjust, how are you okay with the underlying behavior? It's not that the affair was the criminal part. Obviously it wasn't. It was the falsification of business records to cover up the underlying crime, which was the campaign finance violations. But the affair was at the core of this story. And that doesn't bother you one single bit. Cheating on his wife, who is taking care of their newborn, with a porn star. I don't want to hear your judgmental language about anyone else now, MAGA. Here's Eric Swalwell. I, I want to talk a little bit about ju judicial bias, because they've suggested that there's a bias uh, that occurred in this case. Ambassador Eisen, in Donald Trump's other case, where he's alleged to have stolen national security secrets, who, is the who appointed the judge to the bench in the 
Southern Florida federal case. Um, unlike the special counsel in the Hunter Biden prosecution, who is a Trump holdover, David Weiss, that was a last minute, uh, referring back to our history, midnight appointment, you can call it, by Donald Trump of Judge Eileen Cannon. Are you kidding me? Donald Trump is complaining about bias in his case, and he's on trial for stealing national security documents with a judge that he appointed? Well, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't hear any of you all talking about that. Well, let's talk about the Supreme Court who's deciding whether he has absolute immunity and can send the Navy SEALs to kill any of his opponents, as he alleges uh, in his arguments that he can do. One judge is flying an insurrection flag in solidarity with the insurrection on January 6th that tried to overturn Donald Trump's loss in the 2020 election. Another judge's wife was at the president's speech on January 6th, right before the insurrection occurred. It's just an absolutely devastating point for the argument that the real concern about political motivations getting involved in Trump's prosecutions in a way that would harm their legitimacy. The real concern about that is not in the interest of hurting Trump. It's the political motivations that could help Trump in a way that is not just. Eileen Cannon, Trump appointed. So they, they attack the family of the judge and say the daughter's political involvement is proof that the judge can oversee Trump's case fairly. But they don't have a problem with the... So that's a conflict of interest, right? But it's not a conflict of interest for Trump to have a case overseen by a Trump-appointed judge. <laughs> that doesn't make... That, I don't think you're being honest if you're saying that. And in the Supreme Court, too. I believe in the legitimacy of these institutions. So I will accept the outcome of these determinations but it is a little a little too maga for our liking the supreme court that is and you do have a supreme court justice who was flying the stop the steel flag but it was my wife's fault he says and then you have another supreme court justice whose wife the wife for some reason play a really prominent role in these the two stories uh she was at the January 6th speech, as Eric Swallow mentioned, and also was texting Trump's chief of staff absolutely deranged conspiracy theories about how the Democrats for stealing the election were going to be put into, or no, not we're going to, I think it was they were already in barges off of Gitmo and they were going to have a military tribunal. Texting that to the chief of staff of the President of the United States. And, of course, Trump's impact on the Supreme Court with the amount he got onto it. So there's potentially political motivations that could mess with this legal accountability. It's just not the way that MAGA Republicans think. Here's another interesting moment where Republican Chip Roy asks a question, doesn't get the answer that he was hoping for. Are NDAs illegal? When an NDA is used to facilitate an illegal campaign contribution... Uh, over $127,000 in excess of the legal limits, yes. Well, as the it is a as means. The gentleman, as it the is an unlawful Kentucky, means. As the Chip Roy didn't like that. Chip, Chip, Chip did not like that. Then you have Republican Congresswoman Victoria Sparks, and she's also very irritated. Interestingly enough, when talking about intimidation, threatening, and disinformation. I would say, you know, I'm not an attorney. I'm actually a CPA and been involved with finances for a very long time. And I think a lot of Americans should be intimidated and worried if they pay bill to attorney and put at legal expense and they can have 34 felony counts for that. That is true intimidation. That is a true what the law is, you know, so that would make anyone very nervous, you know. Okay, let me just let me just get my wits about me before I choose how to respond. This is a part of the if they could do it to Trump, they could do it to you thing. 
And my answer again is yes, you're right. You're absolutely correct. In this case, if you falsify business records to cover up the fact that you're making an illegal campaign expenditure that you're not documenting as such, then you should be intimidated that maybe you'll be prosecuted, okay? Or if you run out of the White House with classified documents, boxes and boxes and boxes, and then for months upon months upon months, the government says, we need, we want those back, give them back. And you say, I gave them all back to you. And you get your lawyers to lie and sign their name to a statement saying, We've given you everything we have, and then you direct people to move around the boxes to keep them out of the reach of law enforcement, and then you potentially direct evidence to be destroyed, and then mysteriously, the tech room that has the security camera footage gets flooded, and then your house is raided and they find the documents, you should also be intimidated. Yes, Victoria Sparks. If you somehow become president, very exciting for you, uh, and you lose your attempt at re-election, and you use all the means you can possibly think of, some outside of our legal process for challenging elections, and you, for example, try to put together a slate of fake electors, and you have them sign forms that are submitted to government, <laughs> governmental entities where we can just easily see who signed the form piece together the different, uh, you know, connect the dots of all these different individuals who were signed their name to forms that were fraudulently stating themselves to be the electors of a state that were lawfully selected by the state to be counted in electoral college when they obviously weren't. And then you're pressuring your vice president to accept those unlawful electors instead of the real ones so that you can justify staying in power. Then you should be intimidated that you might be prosecuted. But that shouldn't be breaking news or something that Republican Congresswoman Victoria Sparks is opposed to. Let me know what you thought of all that in the comments. And if you want to get the daily bonus show, a members only episode of the show daily and your support in the work we're doing, you can do so by clicking the join button either on the homepage or it should be below this video.